I'd like to welcome the sponsor for this video, Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2 has reached out and wanted to sponsor one of the videos on our channel. And since I love doing educational content and finding a way to make a living doing such, us teaming up to talk about their recently launched new expansion, Secrets of the Obscure, and me talking about how to make an online game social was a great opportunity. I have a long history with Guild Wars 2, including being a closed beta tester, an ex-pro player, and a long-time Guild Wars 1 no-lifer as well. So me doing an ad for Guild Wars 2 is really apropos in many ways and feels like a natural fit. But what is Guild Wars 2 for those that don't know? Guild Wars 2 is a free-to-play, free-to-start MMORPG focused on gameplay, not grinding, which is quite unique in the space. With the recent expansion, Secrets of the Obscure, it brings with it much more flexibility in combat style with several potent system updates at launch as well. With the new expansion also comes the new expansion model with quarterly content releases across the span of a year. If you know Guild Wars 2, you know exploration is a big part of the game. And mounts are a strong part of the gameplay feature of the game, including the flying ones. Players will be able to explore the skies of Tyria with a wing skyscale mount. The new expansion comes with an even easier way to get the skyscale mounts. You can check out those Tyrian skies. So the new expansion, Secrets of the Obscure, brings with it a brand new storyline, powerful combat choices, new mount abilities, and more to the already full of content and critically acclaimed MMORPG, Guild Wars 2. Purchase the latest Guild Wars 2 expansion, Secrets of the Obscure, today, and take it to the skies of Tyria with a skyscale mount to uncover mysteries of Wizard's Tower and fight incursions from the mists. Make sure to check out the description or pinned comment for more information on the expansion and how to purchase it today. Thank you to Guild Wars 2 Secrets of the Obscure for sponsoring this video. You have an expectation when playing an online game, especially an online RPG or an MMORPG, for the game to be social or express social mechanics throughout. That's not just because you're playing a multiplayer game either, but playing a virtual world. Something more than just a game. Virtual worlds, or MMOs, or online RPGs, whatever you prefer to call them, are worlds that are artificially created by developers for players and more to enjoy. Virtual worlds, much like our world, are social ones. Not just because human beings are social creatures either, but entire ecosystems of all kinds exhibit social environments of different kinds and species. Being social benefits us as humans and as a collective society. And in a less serious sense, it makes for better interactions amongst people and therefore better interactions in video games. Some would argue that this aspect is what ultimately makes MMORPGs unique. They build their game and systems around being a world and thus being a social one. As the internet grew in popularity, so did virtual worlds. As not only did they require the internet to function, they specifically focus on uniting players from all over. However, throughout the years, as of 2023, there is not only a disturbing lack of social-focused MMOs in virtual worlds, there's a severe lack of socialization in these games, period. In fact, nearly all of the major titles can be played without essentially socializing at all. Things like easy leveling, easy group content, level boosts, auto-grouping, and more, I will explain in this video, have led to an overall deterioration in socialization. This has made MMORPGs lackluster in regards to creating the very thing they were designed to do, emergent social experiences. These games aren't just about combat or fighting either, when that's just such a small part of the overall world. Even recent social-focused titles like Palea have come out and shown a distinctive lack of understanding of how to build a social world despite building their game supposedly around it. The trend has gotten to the point that now, non-MMORPGs or massive titles such as Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley seem to display far better understandings of social mechanics and how to use and leverage them. I see this as problematic because virtual worlds or MMORPGs are supposed to foster and facilitate social interactions. This is an important personal thing to me because they taught me how to socialize. Without MMORPGs, I not only would have had little to no exposure with other cultures and countries, I wouldn't have learned how to socialize and make friends. Because these MMORPGs are still more so games, or at least being seen as them, versus worlds, it makes some question why does it even matter, right? Like why does it matter? What, what's the point of this video? But like our world, without socialization, we can't properly function as a society and even as human beings. So in this more technical editorial video, I want to detail what a social world is, how to create one, and why they are important. Whether you're just a developer building the next online world, or a player who wants to understand the frameworks of one better. In order to get virtual worlds and MMORPGs back to where we want them, or forward along some and more, we need to learn how to create social worlds again. 
There are some basic rules when constructing a world that I have compiled in my research and experiences. Rules of creating a social world. Rule number one. The creator or creators must socialize or understand socialization. Rule number two. You must force, incentivize, and reward socialization. Three. The rules must be taken seriously and enforced. For the first one. It's quite simple. If you don't understand socialization, how it works and how to produce it with other people that are not you, by the way, aka the same person with the same interests, then it's not going to work. I think this is probably the biggest culprit for why many online RPGs, these days especially, aren't very social. It's because the people making them aren't social, or don't understand how to replicate such a thing in a system or game-like environment. There are certain social and societal rules that exist that might shift in an online environment, but still largely exist. The difference with on and offline in many cases benefits the online participant over the in-person one. What I mean is that it's far less risky to socialize online and therefore it's easier to do such. And as such, it should be a place that teaches and allows people to do such. I think that this is a personal thing for me as I mentioned with online RPGs as they taught me how to socialize. But online worlds that are trying to be connected and thus social must make it easier for players to socialize and thus grease the wheels, so to say. And that takes an understanding of what those wheels are and how to grease them. Number two, you must force, incentivize, or reward socialization. This means that you must design a world and the systems within such to force, incentivize, and reward socialization. You cannot establish a social world with just one of these aspects. For example, if you just force socialization, people will create negative relationships with such, especially those who don't fit into such a system. And if you incentivize but don't provide any actual mechanisms for doing such or pushing people towards such, well, people just won't socialize. Rewarding socialization is a bit of an oxymoron in the sense that, well, the reward is the socialization and the experience is its itself. But in a video game context, players might not know that or how to access that. So you reward them by giving them shared goals or tasks and then make players work together to accomplish them, then reward those players when they do accomplish them. And finally, the last point. The rules must be taken seriously and enforced. The last one is very important, even if you're trying to make a hardcore PvP world. If people don't respect the rules of the world and thus the rules of society and socialization, then it basically unravels the world. Especially because we're talking about constructed worlds and we aren't good enough at making them yet to ignore such issues. You can see this on PvP worlds where the game can't function because of rampant ganking, or on PvE games where players create opposite faction characters to power grind so much that they don't have competition. While at the end of the day it is indeed a game, regardless of trying to be a world or not, if players can just ignore the social world and rules, then it hurts other people that are trying to engage in it and enjoy it as well. Rules are specific to worlds, and they must also be treated as such though. If you look at all of the original pioneer developers of the greatest MMORPGs of all time, not only are nearly all of them originally MUD players, which is the virtual world game genre that existed prior to MMORPGs, dubbed Multi-User Dungeon, or MUD for short. Another thing to note is that they are almost all tabletop fans. This is crucial because tabletop RPGs gave way to RPG video games and thus online RPGs, and because tabletop RPGs, the founder of RPGs, are incredibly social-centric. Remember, a DM and other players, it requires them to be social in order for the game to function. While there might have been a time that MMOs were more popular than tabletop RPG, that time is not now, with D&D more and more popular than ever. That means that there is something to learn from tabletop RPGs to bring back into MMORPGs and virtual worlds. And I will talk more about that and how MMORPGs and virtual worlds can learn from Baldur's Gate 3 in my next editorial video. Now let's get into the meat of things. In order to create a social world, you have to start from the beginning. I know, devs listening now are like, fuck, that's not a sexy answer. And I get it, it's not, really. You have to start from the beginning when you're doing your design documents and GDDs. That creating and fostering social activity is a commitment and it needs such from the ground up. When our world was created, however you think that happened, it led way to foster life that became increasingly social as it benefited all of us over the growing years. You can't create a social world by skipping the process of creating a world, so to say. Unless you purposely design systems and mechanisms to facilitate such. This is essentially playing God. As famous developer and pioneer in the virtual world space, Richard Bartle has stated on occasion. He even wrote a book about it. When you're creating your world, you have to think to yourself about what will unite the players. 
What will bring them together? Perhaps shared conflict, perhaps shared cultures or factions, trade, and so on and so forth. Simply including social features is not enough. I repeat, simply including a chat service and a friends list is not fostering nor creating social situations. Not in 2023. This is why pre-existing worlds or IPs that become MMOs typically do far better, not just because of budget reasons, but the worlds are already fleshed out and thus easy to mimic in ways that drive towards this goal of being social. But this is a process, which means that we don't just guess and hope for the best. We design systems that drive towards the given solution or outcomes that we want, in this case, players socializing. Just like you need to penalize and remove players who harm such things from happening, aka having consequences in your world to support a social living world. But the process takes place in so many different ways, and devs have to account for such in their world. Trading, for example, requires socialization, so fostering such will increase how social and interactive your game is. Players having a why is not just important in the world itself, but important in creating a meaningful and impactful online world, or just world in general. It's important in increasing socialization. When you're invested in your character, and thus yourself, you're far more likely to be social. I'm going to use some games as examples, games I have either played extensively or have done a lot of research about. The three biggest games that I think do socialization right and have done them right historically that come to mind are Haba Hotel, Star Wars Galaxies, and if you want to count four, I guess technically, it's Maple Story slash Ragnarok online. The former two I played religiously and the latter two I have researched and have done videos on before. Why were these games good at creating social worlds? Well, the genius and allure of online worlds and MMORPGs in general is the variety. They all went about doing such in such different ways. It's both what makes it complicated to define what makes an MMORPG, right? Despite being social, which is what we're discussing. Habo Hotel built an entire game around socialization and creating and customizing your avatar and your own rooms and player housing. These are two mechanics that can create endless amounts of socialization. Star Wars Galaxies built an entire sandbox that required players to work together in order to maximize their fun and productivity, whether from creating towns together, felling monsters together, and crafting things. Star Wars Galaxies arguably had one of the best role-playing and crafting scenes ever, to other mechanisms that can greatly increase socialization of your world or game. Finally, you have MapleStory or Ragnarok Online, either or. They are grindy Korean games that allow you to pour tons of money and time into your avatars. But the games aren't just about grinding, because that gets tiring after a while. During downtime, these games, and they have a lot of downtime, actually have very active social scenes. That's because human beings need and crave socialization. So after grinding endlessly, think working a hard 9 to 5 job, you're gonna need some time to relax and socialize. These games all come with different methods and approaches for creating social online worlds and yet all succeed in their own rights. This is both impressive and intimidating. It means there isn't just one formula for things. Not one way to make things work. But the upside is that it means that, like the three points I outlined, if these are followed and executed upon, you can create a unique social world that's cooler than just making a cookie cutter one. That being said, something I want to leave everyone with, food for thought if you will, is when you as a designer or a player are struggling to think of how to make a given game more social, just start comparing it to your world. Our world. It's the only world that we have. And we have tons of data on it as well. That means that if the game doesn't seem to exhibit aspects of an in real life situation that promotes social activity, then it shouldn't be a surprise that it doesn't. Worlds can have their own rules, sure, but at the end of the day we are humans, and thus we have our own rules and expectations. As you can see, creating a social world is a multi-step process, and it starts from the very beginning of development. But the payoff is a game that can essentially live way past its live date, as all of the game examples I have mentioned have done. That's because when a game becomes a world, suddenly investment into it is magnified tenfold, because players are totally engaged in these worlds to their avatar, to themselves. They're not just games anymore. There's a reason MMO players have been historically called no-lifers, because being a top player or heavily invested into a virtual world basically feels like living another life. And it is, in a sense, right? Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this more technical video editorial.